Hello, welcome back to Move to Improve. Um, I am yeah, Matthew Georges, your host. Uh, we have, of course, Dr. Dr. Alex Fisowich. Right on. And we have our guest, Alex. Why don't you go ahead and, and introduce him? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so today we have Leo King as our special guest. And I've known Leo for a long time, actually. I knew him a little bit when I was an undergrad as well. Um, knew him as the guy like that was actually jacked. No one was really jacked back then. He was on all the posters in the gym and stuff like that. Super, super cool. Um, and then, you know, we both kind of went our separate ways. I went off to school. He started a gym and everything like that. And then flash forward to COVID, I was looking for a new gym, looking for a new place to go and uh, found his place and absolutely fell in love with it. Um, been there for three, three years now almost, which is crazy. And uh, his background is mostly bodybuilding, uh, natural bodybuilding, but he's also been getting into competing and powerlifting also at a high level. And then on top of that, you know, he's an entrepreneur, gym owner, has his own facility, recently got another facility, all of that kind of good stuff. So just having a chat with him today about the ins and outs of sport, work-life balance, and just kind of generally his unique experience, you know, dealing with these different kind of athletes being in these different sports. So, Leo, welcome to the show. Take it away, my man. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. I'm humbled and honored to be here. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah. If, if nothing else, very cool name. Uh, yes. is, that, is that something that your parents gave you, or did you? Ad- I am blessed with a good name, and I've definitely marketed that with my businesses. So, absolutely, <laughs> I would totally yeah. jump on that. Um, and I just took a look at you know your your content history or your competition history you got a long length of uh experience in uh, competing and pretty fruitful endeavor for you yeah so i started in 2011 uh natural bodybuilding um got actually was not fortunate enough to get my pro card in 2012 so i competed in the best natural bodybuilding federation in the world world natural bodybuilding federation wnbf um competed three times at the world championship since 2012 and uh yeah, I, I just love competing. I, I just motivates me to kind of stay in the sport and just compete with all these young guns com- coming up. And I like to balance it out with powerlifting. So I've competed at nationals. I competed at the Power Commonwealth Powerlifting Championships in New Zealand last year. And uh, I like to balance the two just as a sort of a, an athlete. Yeah, that's cool. Honestly, I think that is kind of what interests me the most in some sense about your, you know, your endeavors is the fact that you're able to take something um, like bodybuilding and then also use it functionally in powerlifting because, I mean, I love bodybuilding. It's always something that me and my brother, you know, watch Pipe, Pop and Guy and his kids, you know, we loved it. Um, the sport in general is great, but you find that when you are bodybuilding, a lot of times people aren't necessarily able to use that muscle mass functionally, which makes sense. Like it's, it's uh, an enormous amount of muscle mass that the intent is to put on a show and not necessarily use it functionally you know I get that symmetry is huge and symmetry will some at some point kind of converge with function but to actually take that muscle mass and use it is is something entirely else Mm -hmm. yeah so um, we know that a bigger muscle is has a potential to be a stronger muscle right and also a stronger muscle has the potential to be a bigger muscle so I kind of like to balance out my training blocks and training you know, macro cycles to kind of help each other out and perform at a decently high competitive level in in each of them, right? Um, Yeah, symmetry is important. There's definitely lacking areas when you strictly do powerlifting and you're not growing certain areas of the, the, uh, you can't put the volume into certain areas to actually be as symmetrical as sort of the the bodybuilding needs sort of require. Right. you know, and, and vice versa, to do powerlifting at a high level, you really need to dedicate on those big compound three lifts and, and mostly just try to stay healthy along the way as well, right? So it is, it's, an, it's, a, it's a balancing act. Yeah. Cool. So where do you think um, it conflicts the most? I know you said there, there are muscle groups or there are areas, but maybe can you tell me a little bit specifically about where things tend to veer off with powerlifting versus bodybuilding in terms of muscle mass? Yeah, I think, uh, like, if you're looking at the body as a whole, uh, you know, hamstrings, calves, uh, you know, biceps to an extent, uh, even chest, like, you know, bench is a great all-round exercise, but you're not going to get the best chest stimulus out of it, shoulders as well, but, 
you know, good for the erectors, good for the posterior chain, you know, glutes and quads. Um, but again, there are all those lagging areas. And what I typically find is not being able to put in the volume and the work to be able to, uh, to recover enough to be able to, you know, actually put in all the work for the powerlifting. <clears throat> yeah, people notice that a lot actually is that people when they're making programs, they're like, oh, I have this weakness. I'm going to add this. I'm going to add this. I'm going to add this. And people think it's like almost a choice that you're choosing. This is what I want to do. And it's like, you don't really get to make the choice. Like biology chooses it for you. Like this is either going to be helpful or it's going to be detrimental. And so a lot of people, you know, it would be awesome if we could just be like, yeah, do a powerlifting program and make sure you're hitting biceps and hamstrings and quads and all that stuff. But you're taking away from that pie. And so that's something that I found too, just being in weightlifting and powerlifting. They overlap a lot, but there's enough differences that you need to really be leaning towards one more than the other because at the end of the day, you just can't recover from everything. So it would be nice if you could, you know, just hit some biceps and then be ready for the stage, but it doesn't really work that way. It's almost like your body is shifting entirely like in one direction or another. And the, the more advanced you get, the further you shift away. Yeah. Right. right. So yeah, it's all about taking seasons and building out your micro cycles, meso cycles, and just depending on where you want your sort of, big outcome, big, uh, what's the results you actually want to achieve. Right. And, and that's where, uh, being able to program and plan is probably so, so detrimental and huge. If you're, if you want to have big dreams for yourself in, in multiple sports, being able to, you know, um, plan things out appropriately. But I think one of the, for me, one of the most obvious benefits of being able to do both is with bodybuilding, oftentimes what you're going to see is people are blowing out discs because they don't have the core stability. And that's something that is just has to be emphasized with powerlifting. And so to have longevity in, in bodybuilding, you know, it's so often, it's just not, it's just not keeping up with the, so much muscle mass you're putting on in the extremities distally and not having that core control. Whereas powerlifting is going to be a huge emphasis on that. So I think that complements it very well. Big time. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So have you found, um, cause like I said, it's kind of focusing on different things at different periods of time. Right. And so for you, if you're, how do you schedule your training year kind of thing? Like how do you break it down into hypertrophy off season for bodybuilding? How do you incorporate that into more like an off season powerlifting? How do you bridge the yeah. two? It usually depends on the duration between sort of when I'm getting back on stage. So every sort of three years I like to compete in the bodybuilding world. I don't think it's really possible to do both bodybuilding and powerlifting all in the same year. It's just two, you're just training the- You're not making the, progress. Totally, right? So, um, and then yeah, so I, I give myself a full, you know, usually 18 months or so to really dedicate to, to powerlifting. And obviously that starts off with, you know, uh, more variety, more uh, in, with regards to the main compound movements, but you are still focusing on the squat, the bench, and the the, uh, the deadlift, and then building up the volume over periods of time just to create that big foundation, which again, it does add in for adding muscle mass, etc. And then as you sort of, you know, 12 weeks out from a competition, you're just trying to have this big broad base to begin with, and then you're sort of start, you know, transitioning and peaking intensification process, etc. right? Um, and then, yeah, usually, you know, two to three powerlifting competitions over the course of 12 to 18 months seems to be good and seems to be what I personally enjoy. Again, not for everyone. Uh, and then after that, you know, 18 months, I'm usually looking at about a year long to really put on as much muscle mass. So I'm starting to drop back the volume with regards to the squat bench and deadlifts, you know, just way more just variety, machine based movements, dumbbell based movements. Uh, and then, uh, you've also got the added factor of now you've got to, you know, cut a ton of body fat to get onto the stage, right? And you're not going to make any progress just because it's so conflicting with regards to energy needs and balance mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, put on muscle and put on strength. And so at that point, you're just, you know, damage limitation and um, just trying to reserve what you've kind of put on over the last one, two, three years or however long it is for, yeah, depending on the person. Right. That's, you know, it's such a great concept and that's why it's so beneficial to have an expert in your corner when it comes to creating your program. But like, yeah, strength and, and hypertrophy are not the same and they, they can be very conflicting depending on what your needs are.
Absolutely. And and on that note, have you noticed that there's anything that's really consistent between your bodybuilding and your powerlifting program? You were saying you get away from more compounds, do more machines, but is there any like staples that you're always, always doing? Uh, when I'm doing both of them, not usually, yeah. right? Like I'm, you know, maybe you are starting off with a squatting style movement, but for powerlifting, you're pretty much just back squatting. Yeah. You know, maybe a small variation of, maybe it's a tempo squat or, or a pause. Squat, so. or, exactly, right? But what I found is it's, you know, not the best range of motion, yeah. right? So now you're restricting on, again, it's a conflict. You're not going to be able to potentiate the most amount of muscle mass within that specific movement. So maybe a safety bar squat or maybe it's a hack squat and stuff like that. So I kind of go through these sort of transitional process where I'm moving from this back squat to a safety bar squat to a to a hack squat, which is also easier on the joints. Because again, you're trying to, you're trying to, you know, the longevity aspect, right? So you're trying to, what, what can you do for the longest amount of time that gets you the most amount of results, right? Absolutely. And no one wants to get injured and uh, et cetera along the way, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I wouldn't say this, something that's a total staple in my program but it's always kind of shifting yeah. depending on which you know season of life i'm in for sure and that, that that's a great point actually is that you know both in powerlifting and in bodybuilding we're looking for a specific stimulus like there's a reason that we're doing an exercise and people are always trying to say like this is the optimal exercise you know all you need to do is squat or whatever it is and in reality, like, yeah, you can get some of the results that way. But when you get to a higher and higher level, you have to do things that you haven't done before. And so even something like a hack squat, right, it's changing the forward knee travel over the knee. It's using the quads in a different position. It's doing all of these things different that while it may look exactly like a squat, the intention is completely different. And then as a result, the results are completely different. Yeah. Rep ranges is also something that way more variety in rep ranges than to the bodybuilding, right? Because you can grow muscle at almost any rep range as long as you're taking it close to failure, right? Yeah. So, although I wouldn't like to do a 30 rep back squat, but yeah. a 30 yeah. rep leg extension or whatever, right? And right. Uh, that kind of idea. So, versus more so in the powerlifting, it's for the most part, it's four to six rep ranges as your five rep, and then it kind of yeah. comes down from there. So, yeah. yeah. And that was something I wanted to ask you too, actually, about the rep ranges because um, the coach that you have, Jason, with the strength guys, he was the guy that I did my strength and conditioning internship with a, co a couple of years ago now. And one of his biggest things is that powerlifting is an expression of strength and it's a skill, but it's not necessarily what you need to be doing in the gym all of the time. And he is really, really big on only hitting 92% in a training cycle or 95% or whatever it is and not having to try to set a new max, just continually raising that floor. Um, do you feel like you program your bodybuilding stuff kind of with that similar concept in mind? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, Jason's a super smart guy in, super in smart. all areas. Right? He started in the, the bodybuilding coaching realm and then shifted into the powerlifting, but he still has a good uh, uh, good concept in, in both, both industries there. But uh, yeah, I think... Uh, um, Sorry, just going mind blank here. But uh, all good. one thing that I also no, just said mind blank. All good. Repeat the question. Yeah, we were just talking about Jason and just talking about raising the floor. Yeah. You know, building that base of volume so that you can express it later. How has that, how have you taken that from powerlifting into bodybuilding? Type yeah, if, if you're always trying to create that bigger foundation, that, you know, that bigger floor sort of approach, right? So, you know, when you're transitioning back, you can definitely work off way less volumes, right? Two to three sets uh, for a few different exercises is going to be enough stimulus to actually kind of uh, make progress. And that's what I'm always gauging it on. Am I making progress? Uh, if I'm not making progress, something needs to change. So yeah. that way you can sort of add in more sets, right? Or sort of uh, to change up the exercises or whatever. You're just trying to make progress over time, right? Yeah. Which is why you have to give yourself enough time. Yeah, to, to know make, that. Absolutely, right? Not just on the experience level, but from an actual productive standpoint of putting yeah. on that muscle mass at this stage in the in the game there. So Absolutely. And you know, something I learned this year, especially on the powerlifting side, is we always have this, you know, the the longer you train, the you know, the, the better you get, but there's an, also an a, gonna be an inflection point, right? Yeah. Uh, when you start off, uh, this is more so on the powerlifting side of things, you can actually you can make great progress by, you know, just front squatting and your back squat's gonna go up and yeah. up. The longer you train the more specific you have to be and which is why for the last three or four years we've just been doing squat bench and deadlift for those main lifts but at a point 
where you can't put on any more volume or any more intensity on that volume because then injuries start to occur. Mm -hmm. That's when you actually have to broaden the base again. Yeah. And this is a super fascinating concept that I we just about hit this at this past nationals. Um, and where I was just not making any more progress anymore. And it's just like, okay, now we have to almost take a step back, uh, you know, take out some of the volume on those major lifts and then give you give your body some extra variety, see that you're staying healthy and still making progress, right? So it's your, then you're trying to create that bigger foundation again to get that ceiling a little bit higher. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was super fascinating, yeah. Yeah, we, we've talked about overtraining uh, a lot in this podcast, I would say, and I don't, I think this is kind of a foreign concept to a lot of people in that you don't want to be too sports specific, right? Like if you're in an off season, take the time to do a different sport or even in terms of bodybuilding, powerlifting, add some variety like variety is the spice of life and too much of one thing is actually going to be detrimental and of course you're going to hit those plateaus um, but not only that you're going to expose yourself to re repetitive injury kind of thing yeah that's a great point actually because you have this balance point between specificity and just generally like being prepared like general physical preparedness and what we find a lot of times is that since something like powerlifting, it's relatively simple. Like the skill ceiling is relatively low just because it is just the squat, bench, and deadlift. There's kind of like no other outside factors a lot of the time. Um, but the problem is, is that people don't see the wear and tear and kind of that like repetitive stress injury type thing that, that people do see. So it would be awesome if you could just squat, bench, and deadlift every single workout and still make progress. But as soon as that slows down, like Leo said, that's where you start looking for other things. You're like, okay, well, where's my volume at? Where's my hypertrophy at? Like, how are my joints physically feeling? Like, I know a lot of people um, that do do powerlifting, especially equipped powerlifting, they will take weeks, if not months, off of the squat, bench, and deadlift, even though that's pretty much all they do, because the physical impact of just having that bar on your back, having that bar in your hands is just so hard on the joints and the bones. And like, people don't think about that, but that stuff has to recover as well. And it also recovers at different rates, right? Like your muscles might be good to go in two days, your tendons and ligaments might be good to go in four days, you know, your the end plates of your vertebral bodies might be good to go in two weeks or a month or whatever. And just making sure that all those things get addressed and lined up. Yeah, yeah. And, and really that can be extended to anything, whether that's your job, uh, you know, you're a painter or whatever. Like too much of any motion will be at some point cause injury and, and be detrimental. Absolutely. And, and if you do come back and you're worried like, oh no, now my lifts are lagging. It's like give your nervous system time to adapt more yeah. than anything. Your nervous system will learn and you'll be right where you started or, yeah. or beyond that. I have a great point with that, actually. I have uh, a patient who's like, you know, just getting into the gym, just getting into bodybuilding slash powerlifting type stuff. But he's like super genetically gifted, super good levers, just like, you know, big joints, all that kind of stuff. And so he's been like lifting. He's been kind of messing around, but he's only been lifting for a year, maybe. And his best squat is like 415 already and everything. Wow. And the last couple of, of weeks that I've seen him, he's been busy with finals. And uh, he's kind of like, oh, man, I'm losing all my gains. Like, I don't have any strength. Like, everything's going down. Like, I can't even squat two plates, all these things. And But he wasn't training the squat. He was basically just doing nothing. And then I saw him, like, yesterday, I guess, comes in. And he's like, oh, yeah, I uh, went back to the gym and I squatted 405 again. And it's like, bro, do you not realize, like, how impressive that is? Like, you're worried about losing all your gains and yet you're hitting 90% of your all-time max like the first time back in the gym again like yeah, yeah. there's that's there, pretty well yeah and and i mean you don't sense. people people think you lose it but you don't lose it it just kind of you know fades away but then when you turn it back on it turns right back on again yeah yeah, yeah you start stimulating the, the neural pathways that have just not been used specifically for a while it just doesn't take long right absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so leo why don't you tell us a little bit about your you know your endeavors as a gym owner and i know that there's a, another another one popping up for you why don't you go ahead and tell us about that yeah i mean so i started on online coaching so physique transformation that was kind of my sort of entrance way into the entrepreneurial world but i've always wanted to own my own space so um i was doing corporate health and wellness for a few years in this in the downtown calgary area and it was it was great but i 
you, you there's always restrictions, right? And you, you can't really do what you want to do and create this brand. So I uh, took the leap of faith in 2015 and just opened up a, a CrossFit studio had kind of closed down. I was like, you know what, this this is a kind of a setup all ready to go. And then I just kind of put my own spin on it. And uh, yeah, we've been growing ever since. We expand, uh, you know, we kind of uh, outspaced that within a year. Then we went to a second location. It's about 2,500 square feet. We outspaced that within a couple of years. Um, and then we've been in our current space for the last five years and it, now we've outgrown this one as well at 8,000 square feet. Um, and so now we're looking at an expansion in early 2024. Uh, we're just kind of putting together the drawings and the design and the lease work and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so that'll be about 15,000 square feet, so about a doubling of space as well. And just, you know, obviously more, more gym floor space, but I want to expand what we offer clients whether it's kind of sort of massage or physios and chiros and stuff like that and just have a one-stop shop in-house sure. you know we got a, a jiu-jitsu martial arts group group out of here we got you know uh, trainers that work with youth developing athletes and into the professional ranks as well and then we obviously have our major clientele who you know they uh they just want to you know get a bit stronger or, or look better naked so to speak right and then mm -hmm. our sort of our membership base is you know, people getting, you know, looking to obviously get stronger or perform better or, or what have you and just don't like the, the you know, the corporate or the, 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 the stress of just like a, a big corporate globo gym, right? So yeah, uh, that's yeah. what they like, the environment and the community that we've kind of been creating as well as the, the sort of the equipment, right? So mm -hmm. that was kind of my philosophy is sort of this blend between sort of old school and new school, right? And there's some sort of really nice uh, sort of collaboration to be, to be made there yeah so and then just on that second point there yeah, we did just acquire another a, a downtown corporate gym which i had actually moved away from i think the uh the clientele down there are absolutely amazing but then an opportunity came up and uh my wife and i and another partner decided to jump in on that and uh it's a different sort of look approach it's not our king's fitness sort of uh feel but we're sort of Kind, kind of combining a little bit of that with sort of that mm, corporate executive sort of feel as well. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Thank I you. Mean, it's, it's just fun, right? I just enjoy I provide, enjoy providing a platform for, you know, trainers to build their own businesses, uh, clients and members to, to, you know, a platform for a great place to train, right? And yeah. uh, opportunity, uh, yeah, for, for that too. So we have a lot of fun. Yeah, that's great. I think, I mean, so important to have, first of all, community is obviously what people look for, and that you know, sounds like it's something you exactly emphasize. Um, but then also go to a gym where even newbies can be like, I want to, you know, I want to be looking like these guys, right? Maybe I should work out at this gym. Right. You know, yeah, we have we have 65-year-old ladies that are just inspired by, you know, Brian, our equipped powerlifting squatting 800 and something pounds, and they're just like mesmerized, right? And, you know, but then they go off and then we flip some tires or carry some things around and stuff like that, and they just, they just have fun with it. Yeah, right? they so, feel the same way, totally, you know, as he feels. Kind of <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's funny because a lot of people look at what some of the athletes do at King's Fitness and they're kind of like, oh, I, I could never do that or I would never be there. And I know even for me, like, you know, I started lifting weights when I was 14, you know, 15 years ago. And it's like, I was, I was there too. Like nobody is ever just there right at the beginning. And a lot of people are afraid to like make that leap, try something new, being bad at something, whatever it is. But I, I actually love that about the members at King's because you have this mix of high level athletes and just regular Joes, but I feel like they both kind of interplay with each other. Yeah. That the athletes, you know, re recognize it's like, you know, maybe not as serious as they take it, and it's a little bit more of a relaxed environment, whereas, you know, the average, the average clientele is like, okay, well, I can take this a little bit seriously and like maybe kind of see where this kind of thing goes. Yeah. So. And when they get curious as well, they, they start asking questions, and that's when that sort that's of when you light know. bulb goes off, and it's like, yes, this is a really cool yeah. sort of situation environment right so, yeah, yeah yeah very yeah. happy with that i've i've noticed that a lot actually with just like random members that train at the same time as me in the morning is that people will come in and maybe they don't know anybody they're maybe kind of new to the gym or working out in general and you can kind of tell they're kind of like going around just like trying things out and everything like that but over time over a few months you notice those people and you watch how their workouts are evolving and they're watching how everybody else is doing stuff and like they're getting on that path just by being in that environment, just by being around those other people. And I think that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Atmosphere is everything for sure. And then the opportunity to 
learn and kind of step up to the next rank if you need to or not or just like to be in a good atmosphere yeah, and also that we've got so many you know new people now are getting into oh I could maybe compete in powerlifting or on the yes. bodybuilding stage or whatever, right? Because, yeah. you know, that's the, the, you know, powerlifting's grown so much in the last decade, right? Last probably six, seven years. Especially, yeah. Um, and it's more accessible now for everyone, right? You know, we, we again, my 67-year-old female client, she competed for the first time last year. She deadlifted 225, wow. yeah. squatted 185, right? Like, and it's, that's you know, amazing. and they, they are inspired by, again, all these young people or, or whatever. And it's like, yeah, maybe something I can do. And it's totally that opportunity that we like to kind of provide for them, right? So for sure. And I think we just like, you know, put that out there, highlight there for people that are getting into that older age range that have kind of written themselves off. Like there's a better way guys, like, you know, get with a good gym, get with a good health professional, Take that step, and you, you're never going to look back and regret it. Like you're just always going to wake up feeling good and feel proud about yourself and achieve more than you thought you could. Yeah. So Yeah, we, pre we preach strength as a foundation, right? So, yeah, you, you, you'll you wake up feeling better, more energized. You'll have more health in your step, right? They're keeping up with their grandkids. There's still stuff that they wouldn't have done if they hadn't started taking it on their own like hands to actually do, right? And, again, sure. move some weight around, get a bit stronger, right? You know, if, uh, if there's any mobility issues or anything like that, seeing the professionals like you guys and, and yeah. again, putting their health first, which a lot of people don't do, right? So it's yeah. Unfortunately, it's a lot of people live their lives and don't get into that part of life, but the reality is that movement and exercise is the single best thing you can do for your body, for your physical health, for your mental health, for all cause mortality. It is the, the, the essence of life, it is the founding youth, so um, for sure, love to have you on the podcast. Is there anything you guys want to bring up as closing statements? or? I just want to say that I appreciate Leo taking the time to come out and chat with us and give us some info on his expertise and his unique, unique takes on everything. And, uh, yeah, just to re really appreciate you coming out. And... Yeah, no, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for inviting yeah. me, getting to know you both and Alex so that over the last few years at King's. And... You know, uh, looking forward to seeing you break many more provincial records. And That's right. <laughs> <All things>. right. <laughs> thanks again, and thanks to our listeners for all the support. You know, we, we kind of opened this podcast up with zero expectations, but we're really happy the way things are going. We enjoy what we do, and it, it's cool that people take interest in this kind of stuff. So thanks again.